We're ready. Okay, I asked you that. Uh, and it asked me if I knew of anybody who would come and speak to our group here. And I thought of Jeanette. Uh, she's very knowledgeable on everything. She's been a great help in the Garden Club and everything else, and Camellias. And then I started helping her with a uh, little bit with her dipping the camellias in wax. And I said, works for roses, right? She goes, yeah. I said, OK, let's see if I'll talk to Ken, and we'll see if we can have you come and do this to our Heritage Rose Group. All right, this is a little bit about her that even I didn't know all this. She found her love of gardening from her grandmother. She's the daughter of German immigrant farmers. She worked in a greenhouse while going to nursing school. I knew she's retired Air Force. She was what, a lieutenant colonel? Mm -hmm. Very impressive, okay? She joined the Garden Club of Lakeland in 2008. She's been the secretary. She's a past president of the Garden Club, and she's president uh, right now of our circle. We have seven circles, and two of them meet at night. So for people who work in the day, we have garden circles at me at night. She says she learned to grow camellias after some major fiascos. Uh, she decided roses were too challenging in Florida. She didn't know about heritage roses then. And uh, through an American Camellia Society tutorial, she's learned how to wax flowers. And she's been demonstrating. Uh, she's demonstrated at Crago when we had spring obsession and she, different clubs, and uh, I offer to be her assistant if I don't screw it up, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette. Well, I recognize, I recognize many of you. I'd like to thank you for having me. And um, like I said, I learned this while on the American Camellia Society website. I was looking for programs for the Camellia Society uh, meetings, and so, um, this is really fun and I, it's a hands-on, so after I talk to you about it, everybody will get to actually do it and take home their flowers. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't require, I know it looks like a lot of stuff, but it actually doesn't really require a lot of equipment. One of the things you'll need to have is like a Presto pot, um, and that's to melt your wax. Now, you don't want to have a slow cooker, you don't want to have a fry daddy because they get your wax either too hot or you can't control the wax you want something with a fairly that's too cold a fairly wide mouth so that you can actually dip a large bloom like a magnolia if you have one some camellias you know are very large some roses are very large um but the roses they had at Publix are very small <laughs> so we have a couple pretty ones but we have some very small ones so you need that, and it's a very, very important that you have the right temperature. Because if you have it too cold, you're gonna have kind of a cloudy wax mixture that's gonna leave globs. And if you have it too hot, you're gonna burn your, your blooms, basically. So 138 for white, and about 140 for light pinks, um, or like little variegated kind, is what you want it to have. And I know this because the first time I did it, I just burnt the ticket out of like pentas and everything I kind of tried. So, and then you're gonna have a quench bath, a large bowl. I had ice in here, it just melted. And you really wanna take the ice out anyways because you're gonna take this hot wax and this hot glue, and then you're gonna take it and quench it in your, your cold water and that will keep it from, from burning. You also want to have a little uh, strainer, and this will do two things. You can strain the globs of wax out of your um, bowl, or if you get any kind of pollen or leaves or anything like that, you can keep your, um, your bowl clean, and then afterwards you can kind of clean your wax. The wax in your bowl, in your pot, is good for like a season. It doesn't really get rancid very easily, but if you get a lot of nasty stuff in it, I would dump it out at the end it's of the season. Waxes. No, I'm gonna go over that. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so um, you want to measure how hot your wax is. So some of the things that are do's and don'ts. Don't use an oven thermometer. Don't use a meat thermometer. If you use a candy thermometer, think about this. Now, how are you going to read it? 
So we really don't use that either. The best thing to use is like one of these little digital thermometers. You can stick it in and you can pull it out. And it's very accurate. Some people actually, you know, put a wire kind of across. But every time I've tried to do that, I've ended up dunking my whole thing into the bottom of the hot wax. So I don't do it. I've tried. There's wire here, but I, but I don't do that. And then I do have wire because you can wire your blooms if you're afraid that maybe you're going to burn your fingers. Or if you're at your house, you can wire your blooms across the knobs of your cabinets and hang all your blooms on the wire or string with like um, clothespins. So you can use a clothespin to actually dip them in so that you protect your um, fingers. Some people try to do wax on the stove, but be very careful with that because wax is very flammable and um, it's very easy to, you know, I say easy, but I've never done it because I know I would catch a fire, um, to, you know, catch a stove fire with the, the wax. And it's not pure wax, like Carolyn mentioned, that's too cold. I can see it. I know. I know. It's, it's so you use golf wax, kind of like what we used to can with, put on the top of our preserves. And this is a pound container, and you use one pound of wax to half a cup of mineral oil. So these are my props. So, um, and what happens is because you're adding some of the mineral oil, your wax will be smoother and it gives it almost like a porcelain appearance. If you just use pure wax, it just looks like you added wax to your, to your flowers. And actually the Victorians were some of the first people that did flower waxing. I thought that was kind of interesting. So to preserve the flowers. and. Uh, some of the people that were here first, I mentioned that my piano teacher waxed some flowers at one of our programs last year, like a year ago, and she has them in a refrigerator, and all they've discolored, the forms are still perfect. And so um, she could spray them with like silver paint or gold paint and use them for like party. Um, or you can actually use wax flowers on birthday cakes. They don't require water. So you could put a little bit of moss and a little bit of ivy, and then you have like a little arrangement that you could have around the house um, without any kind of problems. So there's some flowers that don't work. So I wanna just go over that a little bit. The thicker leaf flowers work best. So camellias, magnolias will work. Gardenias will work. Um, roses will work. Azaleas, they don't work. You can try it, that's why I brought it so you can see, but because they're kind of a thin skin petal, they don't work very good. And when I tried Pintas, like two years ago, they didn't work at all. Impatience don't work. Um, and this is a, a mystery, because I didn't have hydrangeas before. I'm not sure what's going to go on with the hydrangea. The key when you do the waxing is you want to pull back the leaves because if anything dark is going to look like you put wax on a dark leaf. So you want to pull them back like on these astromeria, pull back the leaves. And then if there's anything with pollen, like I noticed there was some pollen in the astromeria, just kind of pull that out a little bit because you're going to get your wax dirty. Um, you could also change, like put a yellow crayon in here or a blue crayon in here, and then all of a sudden you got blue roses, or you got blue carnations, or you got blue camellias, or gold camellias, or whatever, just by adding a crayon to the, your wax. So that's kind of fun as well if you have a theme for a party. And then I think that's about all the key points that I need to talk about. So, when we do this, I'm just going to pull one of these things here. Yeah, I'm trying very hard to get this just right. What is it? It's too hot. <sighs> See, it's going to burn. What, how hot is hot, too hot? 143. Oh, too hot. It's too hot. I'm trying. Okay, I'll just keep talking and stirring. So, so, like I said, about 140 is about as hot as you want it because you'll just burn the, the petals. Were you doing this? 
No, I wasn't stirring. Oh, okay. I don't you know say I a white flower? I don't know if I can only use 140. Uh, 140 is like the the pinks. Oh, but like, the okay. whites. Oh, the okay. whites are a little oh, more fragile. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh -huh. sorry. And so you want it a little bit cooler. Okay. I guess is it? It's 140.7. Okay, Six. we'll do we'll do a pink. Okay. Um, did somebody that brought a rose want to do the rose or watch me do the rose or do you want to? Yeah. Okay, come on. We're good. Watch you do it, and then okay. I'll learn. Well, here, let me do one. Let me do. I'll do an extra area, and you can come up here and do um, your rose after. And I'll do kind of. Okay. So when we dunk. We're gonna dunk quickly. We're not gonna dunk like this though, because just think if you were like getting your face smushed with hot wax, it can distort the petals and stuff like that. It won't be pretty. So you kind of go on the side, then you're gonna shake, shake, shake. Then you're gonna turn it up, and just let the wax settle a little bit. And then when you put it in here, you're not gonna go do the same thing, not straight down, because you're gonna distort the petals again, but kind of go from the side and swirl it. And you can keep it in here till your bowl is full, or um, at least about 30 seconds, just to kind of cool the heat. Did you leave me? Are you? Oh, oh okay. okay. Are you All right. Let me check again. Okay. She doesn't want to burn up her pretty rose. Close. Again, like I said, now some people say, oh, one more thing, that you know when you have too much frilly stuff, that the, the wax settles in here too much and they don't like the way that it looks. But I kind of like the way it looks, so I'm using it. Plus, they didn't have too many flowers at Publix yesterday. So I'm gonna put it in, that right straight in, swirl around, shake, 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 turn it upside down, let it just set a second, and then I'm gonna put it in the sponge bath, but I mean the water bath, but I'm not gonna put it directly down. I'm just gonna swirl it like that. And it's done. And then we'll just talk for one second, waste some time, and then ta-da! And it's all wax. Wow. And I'll pass it around. Or Carolyn will. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Just pass it around. And well, then you can come back up and do yours. And then um, I found that the white ones are fantastic. The light ones are beautiful, light pink, even the variegated ones. The darker you get, the more it looks like you just added wax to dark flowers. Yeah, it looks like China, like a China flower. It looks like it's China. Beautiful. All right. Try not to put bugs because oh, bugs are still going to be on it afterwards. I was just thinking, I hope there's not a little in here. I immediately felt bad. I was thinking, is there a little bug in here? I don't see any little bugs. So it's okay. So okay, so pull your, pull your leaves yeah. back because you don't want them to get wet. Like the nerve again. Whoa. Particularly. Notice how I told her to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I see. Oh, that's good. Okay, so again, not directly in, just kind of on the side and in. Kind of like. Yep. And then all the way down, though. You got it. And then swirl it and then shake, shake, shake. And then turn it back up. Ready? Uh -oh. Just so that the wax will kind of settle. And, now and then in the pull back. Same thing. Don't yep. it, but just and then all the way down. And then let it cool. Mm -hmm. And you can just keep it there for a little bit. Because yep. mm -hmm. rose petals are more delicate than the carnation petals. Now how do you have to, to uh, store these? You can store, they don't need anything, so you can oh, keep them so out. Cool. You can <laughs> keep them out, really or you can put them in the refrigerator, they'll last cool. longer. Yeah. Or you can, um, that's about it. They don't need water, they they don't need so anything. Cool. That was really fun, so I do see what you mean about how it collects a little bit, but I like the way it looks like that. Yeah, it's yeah, really isn't great. it pretty? So imagine that with a little bit of moss and a little bit of ivy. Yeah. And then you can just stick it by your lamp, and. Hey, look where that's, that's, yeah, that's very, very pretty. Should I pass it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll see. Thank you. All Who wants to speed up? Thank you so much. That was cool. So I think, does anybody have any questions before we do more hands on uh, stuff? And what about I think the I got all the instructions. What happens to the stem, say, a month later? 
Well, I think it dries. Okay. It just I mean, dries up. Uh -huh. So, but I don't think it rots or anything like that. Uh, it's just it's probably just like yeah. when you dry roses. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like some people I know, they just hang all of like at camellia time, you know, when you have a hundred camellia bushes in your yard, you just have camellias like exploding in your garden like vegetables. So you just put them everywhere, you know? So, and you run out of like things to float them in. So this works awesome. That's a good idea. It's about 110. Yeah. Okay, who wants to do a gardenia? Okay, get it warmed up. Okay, so you know, you fold the leaves back. Oh, you're here. Oh, you're you're on me, Carolyn. I know what you're You can kind of tell when your wax is too cold because it gets kind of uh, cloudy, and you don't always know when it's too hot, except that you burn the dickens out of them. How long do you normally wait in between doing a flower for it to get back up to the temp again? Yeah. Well, um, it depends who your assistant is. Uh, I wasn't going to say that, but since she mentioned it, it's a little bit more. We know how you feel. It's as cheap help as you've got, so. Yeah. You get what you pay for. Yeah. Gosh, can you imagine how beautiful this would be look on like a wedding cake? I, I was guess. thinking the same oh, thing. Oh, man. That be pretty to, that because be you don't want it. You know, mm -hmm. I walk in the oh, shower. shower. <laughs> it is. It's so pretty. Mother's Day. Oh, okay. beautiful. It would be Does nice. Does anybody have any other questions while we wait for this to heat up? How, how, like on this pink rose, how long will that color last? Is that permanent? Um, no. Just like the, our, the camellias that my instructor had, it's not permanent. If you put it in the refrigerator, it lasts longer like hers. Her camellias that she put in the refrigerator in a, in a like Ziploc container, it lasted a couple months. And then some people had like carnations and they lasted a long time too. Like this was a couple years ago when I did carnations. They lasted a long time. But just like anything else, it will, you know, They'll, they'll change color, you know what I mean? It's if, not, if you don't put it in the fridge, mine lasted a week. Okay, here you go. Do they just fade or do they turn brown? They turn brown. But then you can paint them. Okay. You know, and then you got a permanent form. Yeah. And yeah. get all the petals in. That would be neat to do for Be careful. Okay. And then shake, shake, shake. And then tip it upside down. Yeah. That's okay. They turn brown. And then shake, shake, shake. Okay, and then quench it because we don't want to burn that pretty white one. Yes. And then make sure you get yeah all of that. Yeah. And you can just let it float in there and kind of cool off. You want to cool that heat. So actually, for for magnolias, when you pick those bloody things, they don't last very long. I know. So that if you wax them, they would last a lot longer. Than Who wants to try this? This is from my neighbor's yard. He doesn't know I took it. I could only reach oh, two. Too funny. So, uh, okay, there's other. Well, that's right. Next, is, anybody? I'll try it. Does see a lot of magnolias inside my tree? Does it has a They're all up on the top. Oh. You should see. Yeah, they're all up on the top. I said it. So when you quench, just take the ice cubes out. But these won't last. Oh, look, see, here's some wax. So we can pull that out too, otherwise you might get it on your flower. Oh, that looks like an ant. What could be that too? Oh, somebody just preserved an ant. What kind of ant? Wax Oh, that looks like an ant. And the other thing is, is if your flowers are brown, like if your gardenias are brown when you start, it's not gonna like, the wax isn't gonna cover them up and like make them White. white, you know what I mean? You're still going to see those impurity and loss. So, but maybe you'll just amaze your friends so much that they won't even notice. There you go. Better? Wax. 
COVID threats. It's not coming down. <laughs> <laughs> Ready. Okay, while we wait, and Carolyn stirs, does anybody else have any more questions at all? No? So everybody understand why we stir it to cool it down just like soup? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you dispose of that? Of uh, the wax? Yeah. I don't. Oh. I just keep using it over oh, and over and over. Again. over and oh over. yeah, over and over and over again. This it was brand new last year at Spring Obsession. So I just put it in my, you know, closet. Well my outdoor closet. And um and then when Carolyn said, well, you know, would you do it? But like if it gets dirty then you want to, or if it gets rancid um and to tell you the truth don't co cover your ears i just probably threw it out in the trash in a plastic bag <laughs> when it was really dirty do you keep it in the pot yeah oh yeah keep it in the pot oh yeah so you don't use that pot for anything else no nope, this is it. and if you would like to borrow it loan it i will be happy to loan it no one's taking me up on it though <laughs> um, it was about a month ago. I think it was May 10th. Oh. I mean, it wasn't at Craigle Park. It was at Mun Park. Oh, well, that's right. That's yeah. Because right. I live near Lake Craigle and I was kind of I was looking forward to it too there. Mm, and fall obsession is not going to. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's Let's give Janetta a uh, great big hand. This was a great presentation. Yeah. Much. This was this was excellent. And, uh, everybody got take-home uh, examples. Yes, this is great. Much, so. um, I want to announce next next uh, uh, next month uh, the uh, presentation will be by Art and Sydney Wade. They'll be talking about Dudley Farms, and so the meeting will be on the third Sunday of the month. It'll be May twenty-first. So uh, look forward to seeing everybody there. Uh, let's do the wrap.